Swiftmeisters, it's Prof G, and here's another in-class exam challenge, the Jokes app, an app to get random jokes using a free joke API. I won't vouch for the quality of the jokes, but I will vouch for the skills you'll demonstrate completing this app. This is one of two apps that my students had to build as part of an in-class final exam. I'm going to be showing each question as the app is built in stages, then I'll show the solution. Now, I'm not going to describe things in super depth because I'm assuming students watching this have already gone through the semester of Swift. If not, here's the URL, bit.ly slash prof-g-swiftui, all lowercase. And there you can find over 100 flip class lessons for the low, low price of free. That's right, friends, a university course for free. Tell your buds. With that said, let me show you what we're going to build. We'll add an icon and a launch screen. And when the app first runs, a general joke will be presented. Jokes come from the free joke.deno.dev API. The punchline is hidden. Pressing the show punchline button reveals the punchline and plays a joke related sound. The show punchline button changes to a get joke button. We'll also add a picker view to select different types of jokes. And when this happens, we alter the URL used by the API call so that we can get jokes of a particular type. And the joke returned when we select the joke type also comes in an array. So we need to change how we parse the JSON. So this is a nice app that shows how you can craft a UI that addresses the different options offered by that API. You'll also notice that the new jokes fade in with a simple animation and the jokes remain formatted in the same place regardless of size so the UI doesn't bounce around. So let's get those JSON jokes, Swift UI style. So we'll go through the challenges one by one. That's how it's presented in the exam. The first thing that we're going to do is create a project named jokes. We're going to download the resources from this URL, and we're going to make sure that we add them to our assets catalog, creating a launch screen and an icon using the files included. Now, if you're new here in our learning videos, we usually explain things thoroughly. So I advise you to go and check out that playlist. It offers lots of pro tips and additional advice as we learn new concepts. But since this is just a solution to an exam challenge, I'm going to go through things very quickly with far less explanation than usual because all of my students have already gone through the lessons. So we launch Xcode, create a new Swift UI app named Jokes. In the Project Navigator, I'll open up the Asset Catalog. Back in the Finder, I've already downloaded the Jokes app files. I'll select and drag over the three files for the launch screen the folder for the joke sounds, and I'll click on the app icon and drag the jokes icon into the big 1024 by 1024 square. Then to create our launch screen, we'll click the top app file in the project navigator. We'll click the info tab, find and expand the launch screen triangle. And in the line below this, we'll click on the plus circle. We'll add a row that says image name. Off to the right, we'll put the image name, which is launch screen. That's the name of the file we just dragged over. We'll click a little plus circle in this row to create another row below it, and we'll select image respect safe area insets, and we'll set the value of this to yes. I've selected the scheme in Xcode to iPhone 14 Pro, so I'm gonna press the play button to build this in the simulator. We see we've got our launch screen, and if we click the home button, we see we've got our icon too. Good work. In question two, we start to work on the user interface. And the first part is this jokes title. I want this emoji, so I'm just gonna copy it right from the test. And the final jokes app should look like the one above. To create the UI at the top of the app, there should be the text jokes with this emoji with white text, large title bold on a red background that covers the entire top of the safe area through the padding on the bottom of the text field. So there is some padding on the bottom of this text field. It is centered across the top and it should look like the image below. Now the key to this is to get rid of the VStack padding at the end so that whatever we do to our top text area is gonna bleed into the safe area. I'm also gonna delete the image that we get by default from Xcode. I'll change the text, pasting in a jokes, exclamation point, the emoji that I copied from the exam. And then I'll add modifiers to set the font to large title, to bold, to set the foreground color to white, to set the background color to red. I'll add a spacer and push things to the top. We see because we don't have any padding that the color that's in the very top view bleeds into the safe area, which is good. That's what we want. But to push this view out to the edge, we're going to add a frame with a max width of dot infinity. But of course, we need to add this before the background so that that frame is colored in red. This looks good. But the last thing that was requested and it was also shown in the image is that we have padding on the dot bottom of this text view. Looking good. Now in question three, we are building this app using the MVVM design pattern. So we're going to create a model to hold the joke and we're going to first access a general joke from the API using this URL. So why don't we copy this and head over the browser, paste this in and take a look at the JSON we're getting. We see this is not an array. It returns something that's called type, setup and punchline. So in order to get the joke, I ask you to create a separate file named joke with a struct named joke that you can use to access the type, setup and punchline of the joke. 
So I'll create my joke file below my joke app file. In the project navigator, I'm going to right click on joke app and select a new file. This is a Swift file, not a Swift UI view. I'll name that capital J joke. And inside this file, we'll create our struct, capital J joke, open and close curlies. Since we're going to use this to parse JSON, we're going to make sure that we say colon codable after joke. We don't need to make this identifiable because we're not going to be downloading multiple structs into an array. If we did, we would want to make sure that we could distinguish each individual joke from one another. So conforming to identifiable and adding an ID property would be important then, but it's not important here. Then below this, we'll say var type equals empty string, var setup equals empty string, and var punchline equals empty string. Now, if you added an ID property in your code still worked, no points off, but just know that you didn't need that ID property. That's it. On to the next question. In question number four, we continue that MVVM journey by creating a view model that we'll use to access the joke API in the MVVM style that we've learned in class and used in prior apps. Now, this file should be named joke view model. It should contain a single property named joke of struct type joke. That's the struct we just created above. And this should hold a joke retrieved by the API. We'll use this property to display the joke in our content view as well. But for now, we'll just print out the joke to the debug area. Now, we're going to create a URL property in this joke view model that will access this URL. So again, we took a look at this earlier. This is what you get back from this URL when we make a call to URL session. The type, the setup, and the punchline, just like the joke struct we just created. We should add a get data function that will be called and retrieve the random joke from the API and populate the fields of the joke property. In the get data function, after getting the joke and decoding the JSON, print the joke setup and punchline property like this setup and the setup text goes here punchline and the punchline text goes here so again setup punchline then we should do whatever is necessary to make sure that the joke view model is properly set up as a view model to use in API calls. We should add an instance of the joke view model to the content view property and call joke VM when the content view first appears and do what's necessary to get a joke. Now at this point, if we build and run the app in the simulator, we should see something like the following printed out to the console, but likely with a different setup and punchline since jokes are returned randomly. So this is what we should get. Let's build. I'll create the view model file below the model file. So I'm going to right click on joke, select a new file. This is going to be a Swift file named joke view model. And we'll start off with main actor, which we always want to do in our view models when we're accessing data using URL session. We'll say class joke view model upper camel case colon. We've got to conform to observable object open and close curlies. We have one at published variable var joke, which is equal to joke. We'll say open and close parens. So we instantiate this. I've seen students just say colon joke without initializing this variable and then wonder why when they tried to work with this class, it was asking for initializers. If you initialize all your variables, you won't be asked to create an initializer. So that's what we do. It's simpler this way. Then we'll say var URL string equals, and I'm going to paste in the API that I copied from the exam. That's joke.deno.dev. Then we'll create our get data function with func get data open and close parens. This is an async function open and close curlies. And I always like to print out the URL we're accessing in case we need to take a look in the console and copy this to verify what we're getting back. So I'll say print, we are accessing the URL, string interp URL, and I like to put a spider web emoji out front so I can easily see where the URL is. Then down below, we need to make sure that we convert our URL string to an iOS URL type. So we'll say guard let URL equal capital URL, select the string option, passing in URL string else, open and close curlies, return inside those curlies and above this we'll print out an error message print in double quotes angry emoji error could not convert string interp url string to a url then below this since url session can throw an error we'll add a do catch clause with do open and close curlies catch open and close curlies in the do portion we'll say let and in between parentheses data comma underscore so we're going to ignore the response that comes back and just pay attention to the data and we'll say this equals try we need that keyword because this throws an error oh wait we need that keyword because url session is an async function url session period shared period data select the option with from this wants a url we'll pass in the url we created above notice this has async and throws as keywords in here we've already dealt with that with do catch try and await we're returning a data in a url response but we're only paying attention to the data 
So we pass in our URL, and below this, we're also going to add another do catch. Do open and close curlies, catch open and close curlies, and we're doing this because we're about to decode JSON, which could also potentially throw an error. So here, we'll take our joke variable we defined above, setting this equal to try JSON decoder, open and close parens, dot decode. This wants a type, and from the type we're going to use is capital J joke dot self. So that specifies the type or container that we're trying to pour the JSON that we access into, and from is going to be data that we got just above this in the do clause. Now, if this works down below, I'll just say print setup colon string interp joke dot setup, and below that, print punchline colon string interp joke dot punchline. And in my catch clauses, I'll put in errors, so I'll just copy the error statement from up here, paste it in the outermost catch clauses curlies, and I'll change this to read error could not get data from URL URL string, but I'll also add in string interp error dot localized description, then I'll copy this error statement, paste the print statement between the catch above this, and change this to read JSON error could not decode JSON data and keep the error localized description in here as well. Now we need to set up our view model as a state object, and we're going to do this in our content view. We're just working through our content view here. We don't need to pass data around, so no need for an environment object. We're going to call that get data function when the content view first shows. So below the close and curly of the V stack, I'm going to say dot task, open and close curlies, await joke, and oh yeah, we need to create that state object, so we'll do that just below the content view struct definition. We'll say at state object var joke vm equals joke view model open and close parens. So we initialize the joke view model when we set it up as a state object. If the joke view model has any parameters that were declared but not initialized, not set equal to anything, this is where it would complain that you need to have initializers. So instead of having to write an initializer, we just made sure that all of the properties of our joke view model were initialized. They were set equal to something, not colon and just the type. Now we've got an object of the class that we just created. So down below, we can say await joke VM dot get data. Then if we build and run, remember to select a simulator scheme. I'm an iPhone 14 Pro. The app launches. And then if we take a look down in the debug console, we can see a setup and a punchline. No errors. Mission accomplished. We've got our view model set up, and it's got a get data function in there that's parsing JSON. Nice work. Now let's set up the joke text views. So the four text views that follow are in large title font. The setup and punchline static text are in bold red color. Below each is text for the setup for the joke and the punchline of the joke respectively. Both are in standard font weight, i.e. not bold. Setup and punchline are always flush left and don't move around, meaning that the letters start in the same position. They don't shift slightly left or right, depending on the length of the setup and the punchline. And at this point, your app should look like this below when you see it in live preview. So in the content view, we're going to add the text view for the setup with text. The string is setup colon, and we'll set this to foreground color dot red and a dot bold. Then below this, we'll add another text view, passing in joke vm dot joke dot setup. Remember, we get that and fill it in when we make our API call in task. Then I'll copy these two text views that I created, paste them down below, and I'll change setup so that it reads punchline. And the view below this should display joke vm dot joke dot punchline. Now I want these left aligned, so up in the v stack, I'm going to pass in parentheses and an alignment parameter colon dot leading. And I want to format these four text views together, so I'm going to embed them in a group. So I'm going to command click on this first text view and select embed in group. And I'll cut out the rest of the view. I got the spacer in there, but that's okay, and I'll paste that into the group. And I want everything in the group to be in large title, so I'll say dot font dot large title just below the close curly in the group. And I'll put another spacer just above the punchline. That'll space out the setup in the punchline. And this is looking good, but I do want these to be horizontally padded, just indented a tiny bit. So at the bottom of the group curly, just underneath setting the font to large title, I'm going to set dot padding to dot horizontal. This looks good. And when we refresh the live preview, all of the text is looking good. It's staying where it should be. On to the next question. For part six, we want to add a get joke button. The button should be at the bottom of the view. It should be centered red background, white letters, and in bold title font. Pressing the button should display a new setup and punchline. And whenever the get joke button is pressed, a new joke should be displayed. At this point, the app should look like the image below. Let's give this a shot. So we'll add the button just below the setup and punchline group with a spacer in it. I'll enter button and I'll select the title and action option. For the title, this is going to be get joke tab over, press return for trailing closure format. And let's format the button first. So we'll say button style dot border prominent dot tint equals dot red dot font equals dot title. We'll make it bold with dot bold. And we see that the button is not centered, but we can fix that by adding a frame with a max width of dot infinity. 
The format is just as we want, and if we want to get a new joke, we've got to call our getData function inside, but since this is an async function, we've got to do it inside of a task block with await. So we'll say capital T task, open and close curlies, await joke VM dot get data. Make sure you put the open and close parens afterward. We can try this out, working perfectly. On to the next question. For part seven, we want to hide the punchline at first, then reveal with a reveal punchline button. So we want to do whatever is necessary so that when a joke first loads, including the first joke, when the app first runs, the punchline text and title is hidden. Then, while the punchline is hidden, the get joke button should also be hidden, but a similar looking button with the label reveal punchline should show. When the reveal punchline button is pressed, the punchline title and punchline text should be revealed, and the reveal punchline button should hide, and the get joke button should appear. At this point, a working app should function like the one below. So we see, first we see the joke show up with the setup. It says reveal punchline. You click that. The punchline is revealed. The button changes to get joke. Again, show punchline, get joke, show punchline, get joke. And you know what? Since it's easy to do while we're here, we'll also do eight, which is animate the joke setup. We want to add a default animation so that the text of the setup only fades in when a new joke is loaded. So this is how things should look when we've done this properly. Properly. We should see the setup and punchline, but when we click on get joke, we should see the new setup fade in slightly using the default animation. So let's build this. So we're first going to need a state variable to help us keep track of whether we should show or hide the punchline. We'll do that up top with at state private var. We'll call this show punchline and we'll initially set it equal to false. Then down below, we'll create a conditional around our get joke button. So we'll say if show punchline open and close curlies and we'll put the get joke button inside. The get joke button should be showing if we're going to show the punchline, else open and close curlies, we want a new button. I'll copy the button above with all of its modifiers, paste it below, change the button title to show punchline. Now we're not going to call our get data function in here, instead we're just going to toggle show punchline, so show punchline dot toggle, open and close parens, and we'll do the same thing up here in our get joke button, because we want to toggle back, so I'll copy this and paste it just above the task call. Now in order to actually show and hide the punchline, we want to put another conditional just above the punchline header and the text. So I'll say if show punchline, open and close curlies, cut out the punchline header and text text views, paste in between the curlies, try this out, we're looking good. We start out with a joke, we can click show punchline, we see the punchline, get joke button shows up, click that, new joke shows up, the show punchline button shows, working great. Let's add that animation, so we'll add it to the punchline, oh nope, I didn't want to add it to the punchline, I actually want to add it to the joke setup. So up here underneath the text view that shows the joke setup, we're going to say dot animation with an animation and value. The animation is going to be dot default and the value is going to be joke vm dot joke dot setup. And live preview refreshes, we see the first joke fades in nice. Now, one thing you do want to be careful of is that default animation in Swift UI is about 0.35 seconds. So if you click the button before the animation is done, you're not going to get new data. There are ways to work around this, but I don't think folks are going to pound on the show punchline get data button. And we haven't learned some of those techniques too. So I think what we've got here is just great. This is all I expect. You'll see if you wait just until the animation is done before you click get joke, the animation fades in perfectly. This is looking solid. Let's finish up this app. So this is the final challenge. These points are five points, all or nothing, meant to separate the truly excellent tests from the ones that are still really good. So in the final challenge, so far what we've done is we have accessed the API by using this URL. I show you an example of what this looks like down here. It returns JSON that looks like this. So there's one element with type setup and punchline, which we gather, we're ignoring the ID, but the API also supports the ability to get jokes of a particular type, including general knock-knock programming, anime, food, and dad jokes. So to get a joke of the different type, you should change the URL so that the base URL is altered as shown before the slash type slash type of joke one, where type of joke is the type of joke in the list. So for example, if we copy this URL here, which returns a programming joke, old joke style, we see that we don't have an array here, but watch this in the new tab, I'll paste in the programming joke, and we can see this gets one programming joke for us a random joke and it's inside of an array. So what we need to do in order to go from this to this is we need to gather an array of jokes, which is just going to have one joke in it. And we've got to make sure that our joke is that first element in the array. So knowing this, you should modify your app as follows. And I provide an extra note in here. You might want to build and run if your picker view doesn't work in live preview mode. Sometimes the current version of Xcode is quirky, but if your code is written properly, it should work in the simulator. So create an 
enum named Joke Type that holds the Joke Types General Knock Knock Programming Anime Food and Dad. I'll copy that so I don't have to retype it. Important, use an underscore in Knock Knock since Knock Knock with a dash in here, which is what those jokes are in the API call. So again, the API call is Knock Dash Knock, but that is not a valid variable name in Swift. So you can't put dashes in variable names in Swift. This is going to generate an error. So what we're going to do with this enum is we're going to add a picker view at the top of the screen formatted exactly like the one below this guy down here looking spectacular and the default joke type should be general the picker view should say joke type as the label in font title 2 bold and red if we select the joke type of knock knock we want to make sure that that shows up as knock dash knock since that's what's needed for the api call Note that the picker view shows knock underscore knock joke type as the string knock dash knock, note the dash. This is going to be important for making the API call. So when the joke is retrieved, whether it's the first time the app runs or whether the get joke button is pressed, call the API for the joke type using the format shown here, where what we're going to pass in is the joke type. This has currently got knock knock in here, but you would put whatever the selected joke type is. You want to modify the view model so that you can get the return joke and display it appropriately. The user of your app should now be able to select a joke type from the picker view as shown down here, and a joke of that type should be returned. Again, note that there's only one dad joke and only one anime joke, so don't be startled if you see the same joke with a joke type repeated when you select it. But when a punchline is revealed, play a joke sound in the joke sound folder. Start with zero. The next time the punchline is revealed, advance to the next sound. If the last sound is 25 and that plays, then begin playing from zero the next time the punchline is revealed and a working completed app should look like this let's finish it up so I didn't tell you where to put the enum. You could put this lots of different places, but I'm gonna place it just inside the content view. I'll say enum joke type, that's in upper camel case, because remember enums are types, colon, this is gonna be string, comma, and case iterable, open and close curlies, and I'll say case, and I'll paste in those enum values that I copied from the exam. General, knock, underscore, knock, programming, anime, food, and dead. I'm gonna need a variable to keep track of the selected picker view value, so I'll add at state private var, select Selected joke equals capital joke capital type dot general. We want to start off with the general joke. No, I'm also going to want to modify my URL so it looks like this. So I'm going to highlight and copy it from the exam. That's joke.deno.dev slash type slash programming is the type. So that's what we're going to change in here. Slash one just returns one joke. And I'll add my picker view below where we add our buttons. And since we want to add a text value and a picker view, I'm going to put this in an H stack, open and close curlies. The text value will say the string joke type colon. We'll make this bold, foreground color red, and font dot title two. And I see I got extra excited when doing this exam and I to put two bolds in there, it's not going to make things double bold, and it's not going to cause any error. We'll also add padding to the H stack with dot padding, and we'll use open and close parens for the default padding. Back up inside the H stack, we'll add a spacer, make sure you keep those parens in there, then we'll select our picker. We'll use the option with title, selection, and content, although title isn't going to show using the version of the picker that we use in iOS, so I'll make the title just an empty string. The selection needs to be a binding variable, so this is going to be dollar sign, selected joke. Tab over, press return for trail enclosure, and let's put a for each in here. Select the option with data ID and content. We want to iterate through our joke type, so our data is going to be capital J joke, capital T type, dot all cases. The ID is going to be backslash dot self. We'll tab over, press return. We'll call the value we're iterating on joke type, lowercase j, capital T. In and after this, we'll just say text joke type dot raw value we want to return the string we see that it's not working over here but i warned you about that but if we build and run we see our picker is working great but we've still got to do some more modifications to finish this up now we want to use our selected joke in this new url so up here just before our task where we call joke vm dot get data we're going to modify the url string in our joke view model with joke vm dot url string equals and i'll paste in the value that i copied from the exam so this is our sample to gather a programming type joke but then i can delete programming and put a string chirp in here and inside the string chirp we just put in selected joke dot raw value and you know what this still isn't going to work because it doesn't address the issue of the knock knock joke remember we want to take the 
selection of knock underscore knock and change that to knock dash knock. So why don't we do that with a function down below before the close in curly. And again, you could have done this in different ways, but I'm using a function here. I didn't tell you which approach to use, but I used a function. I said func format joke type. I pass in joke type colon of type capital J capital T. That's our enum joke type. We have a return arrow and this is going to return a string open and close parens. And in here, I'll simply say if joke type double equals dot knock underscore knock open and close curlies return the string knock dash knock else open and close curlies return joke type dot raw value no change now let's change our for each statement in here so inside the text we can call format joke type and we can pass in joke type then i'll copy my call to format joke type i'm going to paste it up here in the string interp inside here where i set up my joke vm dot url string but i want to change what i'm passing in i'm going to pass in selected joke here now once we have this call to change our url string this works good i'm going to copy this because not only do i want to do this when we click on that get joke button and get a new joke we also want to make this change in the task that runs get data when we first show our app that's this guy down here again just before await joke vm dot get data we'll paste in the same exact line where we update our URL string, but remember, we're still not going to work because we've got to modify our joke view model because we are now returning an array of a single joke instead of just a single joke. That modification, however, is super easy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment out this line here where I decode my JSON into a single joke. Instead, I'm going to highlight and copy this whole line and paste it below, and I'm going to say let jokes. So I'm going to create this jokes constant in here, which is an array of jokes. Since I'm returning an array of jokes, then I need to put square brackets around the joke type for joke.self in here. So it's bracket joke bracket dot self, and it should return a single joke, as we saw from the JSON in the browser. Then we just need to get the first joke in the array, which is the only joke in the array, and assign that to our joke property. So we'll say joke equals jokes dot first. Since this could potentially return a nil, we'll use nil coalescing, double question mark, capital J jokes, open and close parens. But hopefully we'll never see that empty joke returned in here because we should always return one joke. Now let's head back to our content view and add those sounds. We've worked with audio this way in multiple times in multiple apps. So again, feel free to go back and look at any of the tutorials on playing audio. But my students know in order to work with audio, you've got to import AVF audio. We also want to create an audio player. So we'll say at state private var, the variable will be audio player colon AV audio player exclamation point. That's got to be an implicitly unwrapped optional. Down below our closing curly, we'll create a funk play sound passing in a sound name which is colon of type string open and close curlies first we want to get the sound file from the asset catalog we do that with guard let we'll call this sound file setting it equal to ns data asset select the option with name we're going to pass in the sound name which is what we passed into the play sound function else open and close curlies if this doesn't work between the curlies we'll print out could not read file name string interp sound name with angry emoji out front always make sure we return but if this does work below the guard statements curly will say do open and close curlies catch open and close curlies because we're about to initialize an AV audio player which could potentially throw an error we're gonna try to place a new audio player in our audio player variable so we'll say audio player equals try AV audio player open parens we're gonna select the option with data and to get the data we refer to the sound file we read in above dot data and if this works all we need to do down here is say audio player dot play open and close parens but if it doesn't work in the catch area we'll We'll print out an error. I'll copy and paste the error above, but I'll just change this. So it says error, creating audio player, and inside the string interpol, I'll put error.localized description. Now we're going to call this play sound when we show the punchline. So up here in the button action for show punchline, I'll say play sound, sound name. We want to pass in a string. And remember, our sounds are named from 0 to 25. So let's create a variable to keep track of the sound number. I'll say at state private var. We'll call this sound number. We'll initially set it equal to the number zero and again just to remind you if we open up our asset catalog and open up the joke sounds folder we can see that we've got sounds zero through 25 in here so back in our content view let's create a constant to hold the number of total sounds we have we'll say let total sounds equals 25 we could hard code the constant in
in here, but creating a value for this is much better. Then down below, we're gonna pass into play sound a string which has string interp sound number in here. Now remember, we wanna increment this each time we show a new punchline. So we'll say sound number plus equals one. But if we reach that total sounds number, we wanna make sure that we circle back and we start playing from zero. So I'll say if sound number greater than total sounds, open and close curlies, sound number equals zero. This should work. Let's give this a shot and bring on a funny. So I'll press my live preview to refresh and I'll sit back and let you enjoy the jokes and the sounds. Let's make sure you can select a different joke type, including knock-knock jokes, and everything works. So this is magnificent. Again, the quality of the jokes isn't necessarily ready for a Netflix special, but you did show some fairly sophisticated UI work. You worked with an API call to return a single value. You modified the code to deal with the fact that a different API call will return an array of values, and you dealt with the weirdness of an API input that uses a dash, which isn't allowed as a Swift variable type. Now, I hope that you felt that you've learned a lot in our course and that things have gone well for you thus far if not rewatch the lessons until you have things down cold and stay tuned because there's more swift ui goodness to come from this channel now and in the future continue to hack stay most swifty may your sauce always be awesome and your memes always be dank